Welcome back to The Average Kitchen. Mark here with a C. Another fantastic review video for you guys today at home. We've got the brand new Ninja Smart Double Oven. According to Ninja, the only double oven with a flex door. Now this product just came out in the States uh, a couple weeks ago. We were on it, we ordered it, boom, it came here in Canada. Not even available here yet. And we're shooting this video right away so we can get it out there for you guys at home to be able to watch and decide, is it worth it? It's a beast of a product and it's not cheap. With the exchange, and the exchange, um, US to Canada, uh, Canadian dollars not good, but $580 Canadian is what this cost. So, is it worth it? That's the big question. You can see here, it's got a double oven. So, two, two ovens. And the flex door that they're mentioning is this. Now, right away, a couple of things I don't like. I don't like that this doesn't have an independent door. I wish you could open that independently. You have to open that uh, all together like that. And I don't like how narrow this is. So I have kids that are old enough to make toast in the morning and do whatever. Every time you make toast in this, you need a small oven mitt to pull that rack out. Because you cannot toast down in the bottom section. So I don't like that. And I don't like how high this sits off the ground or off the countertop, sorry, that's not level. I measured, it's just over three inches, so it's on this angle. So those are two things, and I haven't even used this yet, just plugged it in. Two things initially I don't like, uh, but we're gonna run through a whole series of tests today. Lots of things, pizzas, wings, air fried wings. We've got a whole chicken to do. We're gonna do all kinds of stuff, but we're gonna start out very simplistic, and we're gonna start out with just doing a bagels. So let's get that uh, opened up. I believe these ones are pre-cut. Yes, they are. So we're gonna pull out this. Again, this product's never been used yet. Uh, pull that bagel apart. And we're gonna set that in there, slide that in. So we're gonna hit top, and we're gonna use the wheel to scroll through here. They have a bagel setting, so let's hit start. So it's showing three minutes and eight seconds. So I'll keep an eye on that. I may flip that bagel, but again, the one thing I don't like is that every time you go to move that, you need to use an oven mitt to pull out that rack. Or roll the dice that your meat hook sl slip it in there and not gonna touch the top or anywhere and burn yourself. So let's let that cook and uh, we'll see how it turns out. All right, so we got a minute left on the cook, so let's just pull that out here. And we'll give that a little flip. You can see some browning on the uh, bottom side there, so that's a good thing. Now I should note that Within the toast and the bagel setting, you could adjust for how many slices you have, how dark you want it. I just went with the default setting on the bagel just to see. But after we do the bagel, we'll do toast probably three ways on a super low setting, a medium setting, and a high setting as far as level of darkness and uh, doneness on the bread itself. All right, so we're back here, getting a little bit of smoke that could be from the initial cook or could be that this is overdone. Ooh, whoa, okay. That got really dark really quick. In fairness, partially my fault, I was not monitoring because I can't really see because I can't look around this. But I, I, I have to think that we need to redo this. But the default bagel setting is not what you want. So let's grab another bagel. Some people say bagel. I think Daryl says bagel, doesn't he? Daryl's a bagel guy. Our buddy Daryl likes bagels, calls them bagels. All right, so 2.0 here, average kitchen. Let's have a look at this again. So we're gonna go top. We're gonna go bagel. We're gonna go temp shade. Let's do a two. Slices, let's do a one. How's that look, Jamie? Cool, now it's only showing a minute 14 to get that done. All right, moment of truth here, let's see. So, probably not enough. So we have one bagel left here, let's give it a try. Might as well, eh? So Jamie thinks that two slices means like one, like there's two slices of a bagel. I thought it would be like two bagels. Like, but Jamie's saying two slices. So, we'll split the difference, we'll do a three, two setting. Does that work for you, Jamie? 
So let's go to a bagel here. Temp, three. Slices, two. So we did a four, two, a two, one, and now we're doing a three, two. So I mean, this for me is, is obviously, it's fine, um, but it's really not, it's very lightly toasted. All right, it's all done here. Let's have a look. So this was a three, two. So I don't know what's going on here. These are now less toasted than this. So this was a four, two, this was a two, one, and this is a three, two, and this is less toasted. So we'll put this back in. Jamie, you have any insight there? We'll go back to bagel. Let's go one, two, just, and keep an eye on it just to see. Like I want it because I want to try it, but I don't want to burn it. Okay, so it looks like a little on the darker side than I like, but it's definitely toasted properly. I'm gonna try it, but we're gonna, we got a loaf of bread, so we're gonna run the bread through a series of um, darkness tests. I, Jamie and I were just speaking, like I can't figure out this mystery of this 4-2 being so dark. Can you, Jamie? Not yet, we'll get to the bottom. We will get to the bottom of it. All right, so let's give this, uh, We'll try here. Are you a top or bottom bagel guy or girl? So it's perfect, but we had to run it through twice, so I don't like that. All right, so we want to do um, a temperature shade um, test for you to show you. So we just looked, the highest is seven, the lowest is one. So I think we're going to do like two, four, six. So let's start out with a level two, Two slices. Put them in the middle here. I am not gonna flip them, because presumably you shouldn't have to. There's elements on the bottom and the top. Let's hit start. So it's showing a minute 58. Now, with previous Ninja products that we reviewed before that retain heat, which these do, your temperature times, sorry, not your temperature times, your cook times could vary based on the internal temperature of the actual unit. So that was two minutes. I would argue to say that if this was cold in the morning, you just got up and you threw a couple pieces of, of uh, bread into toast, it may be 30 seconds longer. I don't know that for a fact, just based on experience, but let's give this the full um, cook time, pull them out and see how they look. Let's have a look. We never opened the door and we never flipped. So, all right. Very, oh, hot. Very consistent on both sides. Maybe Jamie will do a little fly over there. So that was a 2-2. Two, two. I'm almost nervous now to do a 4-2, but let's do it. So temperature, or we're at toast, 4-2. So see the cook time there was the same as what it was here because that's hot uh, heat. Hot uh, heat. Because that is now hot, right around a minute 50. So let's see how dark that's gonna be now because you can see I would say very consistent toasting. The, the very interesting part will be six slices. Is it consistently toasted on all six slices? All right, four, two, let's have a look. What is going on here? Is, is it, the only thing I can think of is that it's back-to-back -back toasts. Jamie, can I get some insight here? Worse. The only thing I can think of is it's because it's back-to-back -to -back toast. Okay. But a toaster can do back-to-back -to -back toast. Well, you would think. <clears throat> we did a 4-2. No, sorry, we did a 2-2. Two -two. Then we did a 4-2. Okay. Live on location here. This is the, on the fly. I'm going to let this completely cool down. And then we're going to do a 4-2 again because this makes no sense. All right. We waited 10 minutes, literally 10 minutes. It still says hot, but it's not. We're just saying how ridiculous we think this is, but let's try a 4-2 again. Presumably, it should be twice as dark as this. Should be. Okay, let's go. Top, toast, temp 4-2. See, now it's 2.55, so it's a minute and five seconds longer than it was this time. 
So let's see how this turns out. Oh, look how dark that is. All right. So we haven't opened it. Can you see? Can you get the smoke, Jamie? So this is a 4-2, cooled down. Wow, that's hot. Why would it not be hot? All right, so this was a 2-2. This was immediately following afterwards a 4-2. This is also a 4-2. Now, Jamie, I don't think there's any need to do a six or a seven, is there? Okay, Jamie wants a back-to-backer, not letting it cool on a 6-2. Real life. Live, at least live here. Okay, we're into toast, temp, 6-2. Now it's a minute 48, a minute left less, or a minute, almost, almost a minute five or a minute seven less than this one was. Anyway. Jamie made a point saying this has already failed the toast test. Let's be honest. All right, so a 6-2, no smoke. It's not gonna be toasted properly. <laughs> That's your 6-2 right there. So, I mean, let's just put them in order here. So this was, Jamie, this was a 4-2, yeah? No, this was a 2-2. Then this was a 4-2. This also was a 4-2, and that's a 6-2. So what is going on, Ninja? Nobody's gonna wait 10 minutes between toast cycles to let your product cool down. If you've got family over and you're doing a big brunch, people are gonna be done eating by the time it cools down so you can toast properly. Even at that, we bumped it up two settings to a six, and like, like, like yeah, okay, it's toasted, but like, that's not toasted. As far as we're concerned, this has failed miserably the toast test. This is brutal. All right, we're gonna preheat that. I'm gonna look in the book and see what it says for air roast, but I wanna just try to uh, roast some vegetables. Now, unfortunately, when I was looking in the book, in the charts, they suggest to air fry vegetables. Now, if you're a fan of the average kitchen, which I know you are, you've seen us air fry vegetables before in dual basket air fryers and uh, I think we did it in the Ninja Grill. It's a disaster. Do not, do not air fry vegetables. It never turns out well. <clears throat> the problem I have with this book particularly is there's no bake, like they normally have these nice charts. There's no bake chart. It's air fry and dehydrate, which dehydrates the running joke on the average kitchen. Nobody is buying one of these to dehydrate. Let's be honest. To cut up a banana and put it in here for 12 hours, it's not happening. So air fry cooking chart, that's it, no baking chart. So it's gonna be a bit of a guess as to how long it takes to do that. When I look in their book here, they have top oven, bottom oven. Bottom oven air roast says, crispy outside, juicy inside for chicken thighs and vegetables. Okay. Convection bake, which would be the other option, is convection air and more room for larger baked goods for baked goods and pies. So I would say that uh, air roast is the right call to make here. All right, so we're 11 minutes into the cook. I can start to smell the veg, which is usually a good thing. Well, let's pull them out, have a look, and uh, maybe we'll sort of mix them up a little bit as well. So we're gonna open that up. So already I see the broccoli's charred, so that's not ideal, at least that one piece. So this piece, can you see it here, Jamie? is burnt, nothing else is. Well, I guess some of the bro broccoli is. The carrots are nowhere near done, neither is the broccoli. So, so far we're batting about zero on this product. Um, even the smaller piece of carrots are nowhere near done. So because there's no cooking chart, we can't blame it on, you know, oh, well, it's, you're cooking it too long or whatever, but I mean, the vegetables are not done. So, I mean, how can you argue that? So we're gonna throw those back in. <clears throat> Jamie did a decibel test as well. I'm sure we'll uh, get that up on the screen so you can see it. Uh, roughly equivalent to both baskets in the dual basket air fryer. So it's not super loud, but you could definitely hear it. All right, so we're counting down here about 30 seconds left. I already know this is gonna be a complete disaster. The dual basket air fryer Ninja, we air fried uh, broccoli and carrots, brutal. 
uh, uh, not even edible. Jamie fought through it and, and uh, chewed some up. I can tell you, I'm not trying the broccoli. It looks, and I love broccoli. Looks really bad. Um, yeah, so I'm not very optimistic, but let's pull them out and have a look. No auto pause. No auto pause, which is another good point, Jamie. So we're 20 minutes in, as you can see, these look horrendous and the carrots are not even done. So I will bite through and try a smaller piece of the carrot. I would say al dente, like still a little hard in the middle, um, but the appeal of them is brutal. I mean, who's gonna eat like broccoli that's completely charred like this? Look at this piece. So 20 minutes again, in fairness to Ninja, they didn't give us any sort of cook time because it's not in the book. But the book did say that air roast was four vegetables, so that's what we did. I don't know who would eat these. All right, so next thing we're gonna do while we wait for this disaster to cool so we could toss it, is we're gonna try to do a plate of nachos in both the bottom and the top. Top, bake, bottom, bake. Both are preheating. Or sorry, the bottom's not preheating because it's already hot, the top is preheating. I'm gonna make a couple of simple plates of nachos and get them both in and see how they vary. Now, I only assume the top is gonna to cook quicker because it's that much smaller and closer to the top element, but we'll have to wait and see. All right, so I got two relatively equal platters of just nacho chips and cheese. We are salsa on the side kind of guys here. So um, we're gonna preheat these. They also have a smart finish or um, a match cook on this as well. Uh, I may have misspoken, maybe not match cook. Smart finish, so that if you have one thing that takes longer than the other, they'll time out. But anyway, let's set our time uh, to 10 minutes, and we'll set our time to 10 minutes. Okay, so let's get these in. We'll do the single door to throw that in. Reaching across my body here. And then the bigger door to get that one in. And I set it for 10 minutes, but obviously that's a total guess. So we're gonna monitor and see how long it takes. Uh, I think nachos are subjective. Everybody likes their nachos cooked uh, maybe a little bit of a different way uh, as far as how much you like the cheese melted or how if you want a little bit of char on your chips or whatever. But anyway, we're gonna cook them the way we like them and we'll let you know how long it takes and how it turns out. Okay, so we're about six minutes in. Let's, uh, there's no pause button, is there? Well, there is. Okay, so you can pause it but it does not pause automatically when you open the door. So we definitely know the bottom appears to be done because we can see it like in full view. Okay, all right, so that's done. And plate number two, harder to see. So I would say maybe not as well done, but I would say definitely done. So you can see the different varying of just in the cheese. Both cooked fine, this cooked more. But I must say, it's the only test we've done so far that I'm pretty impressed with. Five and a half minutes or six minutes, we'll say, to melt cheese for a plate of nachos. You know, if you're young kids coming home from school and you need a snack between school and supper, quick plate of nachos, or coming home from the bar and you got into one, you're gonna wanna hit the chos after the bar, pretty easy. So that test, it worked well. All right. As Jamie and I are crushing through some nachos here, I want to get the next, next test in the oven and cooking. This is a Costco fr frozen pizza. I just measured the uh, sheet pan so you have an understanding. It's 12 inches by 12 inches, so a foot square. So I don't know, that a medium pizza? It's a pretty good sized pizza. So we're going to put this in the bottom oven, but stay tuned to the episode because we're going to cook another pizza in the top and we're gonna air fry wings in the bottom at the same time. So I'm excited to see that. So it says on the Costco package, 425 Fahrenheit for 12 to 15 minutes. This will go up to 450 degrees Fahrenheit, just so you know. So let's set it for 12 minutes and uh, then have a look at it from there. All right, so just finished the cook. By looking at it, it looks really good. I have not taken it out yet. All right, so that was 12 minutes. Let's give that a few minutes to, to cool. We'll cut into it and we'll try it out. Okay, so we're still preheating here, um, the top and the bottom, and we've got our pizza. So while that's preheating, maybe I'll cut into this with the, the old samurai sword here. Okay, so a little on the flop side. So maybe could have been cooked a little bit more on the bottom. 
This is definitely like after bar, Super Bowl type pizza. It's cheap, quick and easy, and fills the void. So what we're gonna do now is a pizza up top on bake and some wings, as you can see here on the bottom. So let me get my hands a wash. There we go, and we're preheated. All right, so we got some wings here. I'm gonna put that in on the middle rack and we're gonna put our pizza in on the top rack. Now the pizza uh, time we know is 12 minutes, but we're gonna keep an eye on it because it's different. And then the wings, I'm gonna say 22 minutes. And let's try smart finish. All right, so Jamie, the Smart Finish Master, set that up for me. Thank you, Jamie. You'll see that the top rack, or the top oven is on hold right now until it gets down to 12 minutes on the bottom uh, estimated time of 22 minutes on the wings. So once it gets to 12 minutes, the top oven will then kick in. So we wanted to kind of show you that as well. All right, so let's have a quick look here. We got about 20 seconds left. Let's just pause that so it's not as loud. Pull that down. So I was very curious and you can see it's already making a mess. I was very reluctant to do these wings without putting something underneath, but I don't know if that would affect anything, but they're only gonna get worse as far as making a mess. But let's give these a turn. I have not turned them at all. So they're definitely not done. The bottom sides seem to be done more, but I'm gonna say based on my air frying experience, these are gonna take at least another 10 minutes and they're not very big wings. The smart finish worked, which is good, which is what we wanted. Um, but as you can see, if you could zoom in there, these wings are making a mess of the bottom of that um, toaster or air fryer, whatever you wanna call it. Let's have a look at our pizza. So our pizza is not done. Uh, it could be done depending on, again, it's very subjective, but I'm gonna put that in for a few more minutes as well. So let's get that closed. Let's add, let's add three minutes to those and let's add 10 minutes to those. And I don't care about the smart finish right now. Pizza just finished. I think it looks perfect for my liking. Jamie, what do you think? Yep. Absolutely perfect. I'm just gonna let that cool for now. I'm just gonna leave it as is and we'll wait for those wings to finish up and then we'll give one of those a try. All right, let's have a look at these wings. Okay, I would say these are cooked perfect. Jamie, can I get a ruling? They look really, really nice. Let's let these cool off a little bit. We'll get some cleanup done and then we're gonna do fries and a baked grilled cheese sandwich in the top. So stay tuned for that. So this tray is, is essentially what I would call like a crumb tray that sits on the bottom that now has collected a bunch of the drippings and the grease from the wings. So the problem I have with this is how long is it gonna take before this tray looks like a complete disaster? So prior to cooking these wings, I thought, well, can I put some tin foil down? Or is the air movement gonna, you know, cause that to flutter around? Or could I put a black, one of the black cookie sheets below the wings to catch the drippings? They don't suggest that in the book or not what I, that I read, but I wanted to just do them this way, which is the way I believe they suggest to try. But in the future, I would definitely put something else underneath so you don't have this situation. The other thing I just noticed was no crumb tray at all for the toaster portion. Barring having to flip this upside down, is if you could look in here, Jamie, if you can get kind of in there. I don't know how, I mean, you're sticking your Dyson vacuum in there, like there's really no easy way to clean that. Normally you just slide out the crumb tray like something like this. So another point I wanted to make. While I have you here, let's try a wing. It's gonna be hot. Fantastic. For me and for Jamie, big crispy guys, wings have to be crispy. These are cooked perfectly. Now, yes, they took 34 minutes and I'm sure there's gonna be some naysayers saying, how did it take so long? I don't know, we didn't design this, we're not engineers. It takes how long it takes to cook them the way we like them, and in this case, it was 34 minutes. Maybe the best wings we've ever done. All right, accidentally bought shoestring fries, and um, it is what it is. So, you'll see we took out the bottom rack, put in another one of the uh, cookie trays and a piece of tin foil that's just dancing in there, making moves, but hey, it is what it is. We made, assembled our grilled cheese sandwich, so we're gonna put that in. 
ooh, close to the top. I never even thought about that as far as the thickness. All right, so that was, I believe, 12 minutes on the sandwich. I did, off camera, I did flip it halfway through. Looks pretty good. I am gonna say that these fries are gonna need some more time though. Yeah, definitely. So the grilled cheese, let's cut it in half. Oh, just a lava of cheese. So a baked grilled cheese, wow. <laughs> Why I didn't put it on a plate, I don't know. So I know I'm gonna have instant regret by biting into this. Cheese for days. I've never made a grilled cheese sandwich this way, but I must admit, probably better than pan frying it. My kids love grilled cheese and they would love how cheesy this is. So I think maybe, uh, maybe this is the new way. Okay, so Jamie and I were just laughing. I have no idea what the total cook time was on these fries. I'm gonna say maybe 25 minutes. I don't even know, but they're done. So here we are. There's your shoestring fries, purchased by mistake. We have to wing it sometimes here in the average kitchen. And here we are, so they look great. Uh, we're gonna give those a few minutes to cool. In the meantime, we are gonna start to prepare. We're gonna do two different types of those store-bought tube cookies, those Pillsbury cookies. Uh, I think one is a chocolate chunk and the other one is a sugar cookie. And we're gonna try to do them simultaneously in the two different ovens. So stay tuned for that and we'll let these cool off. All right, shoestring fries. Now, I'm not a fan. Jamie loves them, he says, loves them. Yeah, cut. Oh, now you drop it. The shoestring, there's certainly not much potato in there. They cook them fine, but I'm just not a shoestring guy. Now, if there's one thing I take seriously here in the average kitchen is consistency in cook times and thicknesses. Now, you'll see there is a precise, like not even measurable. Jamie was making fun of me because I did a pretty brutal job cutting these up. I said to Jamie, when you buy those Pillsbury um, biscuits, you pop the top, it's perfect. When you buy these, you're on your own. So I did the best I can, which wasn't that good, but hey, it's the average kitchen, and um, I'm not a baker. I mean, what can I say? These ones are pretty consistent. So this is the side A, side B. Anyway, uh, we're preheated, I believe. So we're gonna set our time for 12 minutes, and we'll put the brutal looking one up top, and the handsome one down in the bottom. Oh, we don't have a rack in there. Stand by. Shouldn't make a difference. Woo! All right, so our 12 minutes is up. Jamie's been laughing hysterically the entire time. <clears throat> Not sure why. Whoa. Okay, those are not done. We can confirm that. Those look better, all even, but not even close to being done. All right, are these not the most consistently shaped and cooked cookies you've ever seen in your life? I may, falling on the sword here, may have cut those just a little bit too thick, so therefore it took 23 minutes to cook these. Now, are they cooked all the way through? I don't even know, I don't know. Uh, I'm not the baker in the family, my wife's a fantastic baker, so I thought, hey, we've never really baked in a demo, let's do it. Well, huge mistake. Nevertheless, I'm sure they're still gonna get consumed, but we're gonna push the cookies aside and we're gonna do an entire chicken on the bottom rack with the infamous Ninja probe that never works and we're gonna do a mac and cheese in a Pyrex dish on the top. All right, so for my last demo, or our last demo, we're gonna follow Tra or, Traegers. We're gonna follow Ninja's book for their cheese bake. Followed it to a T. I did add uh, some of my Traeger chicken dry rub to the chicken. And as you can see, the mac and cheese is uh, prepped, ready to go in a Pyrex, glass Pyrex. I did check to make sure before that it fit up top and it does. We've got our probe in that's certainly, uh, that's set to get to 165 and I think right now is around 40 degrees. Uh, we've never had success with Ninja probes, but we'll see. Yeah, let's get it in. All 
All right, something just happened here. On this smart finish, the chicken finished, according to the probe, at 165 degrees Fahrenheit, and it stopped. It's on what you can see as hold here. And it took Jamie time at 42 minutes to cook that chicken. And there's roughly, I don't know why it doesn't show the time, that bugs me, but if you hit it, it was about 10 and a half minutes roughly left on the mac and cheese. But what I want to do, and this is what I don't like about this, I don't want to disrupt the upper oven's cook, but I have to in, other, in, in order to access the bottom oven's uh, product. But I want to pull this chicken out, seasoning charred, and I want to see what the, my probe, which we've proven to be very accurate, we've done tests on it, I'm going to run it right beside the other probe, and I want to see what it shows for the cook temp. So generally, we've done videos where the Ninja probes were 25 to 30 degrees off. This one is actually not bad. It was 165? 172. So that is by far the closest we've ever had, ever, to the probes being accurate. And that's a difference of whatever, seven degrees Fahrenheit. So that is pretty good. Well, that's really good, let's be honest. So I'm gonna put this back in to let it rest. The seasoning is definitely charred, but that's not really the end of the world. Well, we almost lost it there with this stupid door. My biggest issue with this product, see how high this sits off the counter? So you've got to come in on an angle like this to put your things there. I'm all fl I'm flustered here in order to get your things in and out. Now, it would probably be easier if I was standing in front of it, but for the sake of the video, I've got to work around it. But that drives me crazy. I measured it, it was three and a half inches at the top that it sits at the top on a downward slope towards the product. The other thing we have to do, full disclosure, while we were chatting, the, one of the things that was bugging us was this crumb tray. According to the book, you can move the crumb tray from the bottom to the top or vice versa. So really, the toaster is where you're gonna use the crumb tray the most, but for $580 Canadian, I want two crumb trays. Like, come on, two crumb trays. All right, so we just took out the mac and cheese. Um, I mean, look at it. it, it's, Jamie tried a piece of the pasta, he said it wasn't bad, but it's, it's not done. So the chicken is done, the skin is charred, that may be because of the dry rub I put on it, I don't know. They suggest spraying it with cooking spray and putting your favorite uh, dry rub on it, which is what I did. So I think what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go back to the, to the big one here, just the bottom, convection bake. And we're gonna put that back in, uncovered, and probably give it another 10 minutes, I would think, eh, Jamie? It's pretty liquidy. It's pretty liquidy. Uh, it certainly doesn't look awesome, but that's what we're gonna do, throw it back in. All right, so I just removed the molten lava mac and cheese. So as you can see, it looks a million times better than it did the first time we took it out. So while we wait for this to cool, let's talk about this product. Jamie and I came up with a scoring matrix that we've been using in the last five or six or seven re reviews that we've done that we're gonna to use to be consistent across the board moving forward, where we look at cleaning, price point, quality, versatility, functionality, and the size. So we didn't talk about the size. Grab the old trusty tape measure here. So this unit sits about 13 and a half inches off your counter, 14 inches deep, about 19 inches wide. So it's pretty big, but it's also versatile. That's the thing I like the most about this is the versatility. And it's really one of the only things I like about this product is the versatility. I like the fact that you could cook a pizza and air fry wings at the same time. I don't understand why you can't just open the lower door by itself. Why you have to open it the entire door. Anyway, that's one thing I don't like. I don't, I hate the fact that it sits that high off the countertop. Now, Jamie suggested maybe it's for if it's on a normal countertop, by the time that door comes down, it's clearing the lip of the countertop. I, I don't know, I, I, again, I, I don't like that. I mean, the toaster oven I have is the KitchenAid. It uh, would still sit in that corner if I had this. Uh, anyway, I don't think it would really make that much of a difference, but crumb tray thing we figured out, it can be moved. I, I still think there should be two. I think that's a bit of a design flaw. So as mentioned, the thing I like the most about it is the functionality of it. However, we've shown that it can't multitask and cook multiple batches of toast in a row and get them right. Actually, the toast was a complete disaster. Like, of all the things that this can't do properly, toast? Really, you can't toast, toast consistently or toast bread consistently? 
So that was a huge epic fail. I don't understand that at all. But for $580 Canadian, I mean, I was just looking off camera while we were waiting for one of these things to cook. I went on the Home Depot website. You can buy an oven, a whole entire oven with an electric cooktop range for $750 plus tax. But this is $580. So I think this is severely overpriced. Like Jamie was saying, wow, geez, the score seems pretty low. So we gave this a 6.3 out of 10 when we did our scoring matrix. 6.7 out of 10, sorry, 6.7 out of 10. And Jamie said, geez, it seemed kind of low. I'm like, well, would you buy this for $400? He said, no. Would you buy it for $300? He goes, probably not. $250, maybe. So it's, it's way overpriced. And not to mention, there's not a lot of people that have the disposable income that, to drop almost $600 on a toaster oven, let's be honest. I think what you're gonna see is, as this rolls out over time, the price is gonna drop significantly. We'll see, time will tell. All right, so I'm gonna just cut into this chicken. I can still see steam rolling out of it. Tender, moist, very nice looking, very hot. But hey, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. It's amazing, like unbelievable, extremely good. So much so, I gotta get a fork for Jamie. Give that over to Jamie, it's actually not that hot, buddy. And? Okay, so now Jamie's volunteered to eat some molten mac and cheese. Like Mark said, gotta do what we gotta do. Oh boy. Hot. I think I just swallowed the roof of my mouth along with the mac and cheese. Very cheesy. Um, I didn't get right to the bottom because it's probably even hotter down there. But actually really good, very cheesy. So if you like a cheesy mac and cheese, very good. Well cooked. Um, of course you want to know how it cooked in this thing. It's well cooked. Uh, we had the chunks of cream cheese and cheese and all this stuff when we first took it out, but that extra 10 minutes seems to have done it. So, so I'm going to wrap this thing up. That's our video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.